Good day and welcome to the 5 HP 18 assembly movie. I promised you guys I would do this much earlier, but I simply didn't have time. Apologies. Uh, but today we're going to start with the assembly of the 5 HP 18 transmission. What I'm going to do is uh, fit all the drums uh, with new clutches, seals, and two ru model rubber pistons. I'm going to put the pump in front, but I am not going to adjust the brake band. I am not going to inspect the pump internally, and I'm also not going to replace the end bearing. I'll do that in a separate movie as I'm still waiting for the end bearing. So you will only see today how to repair the clutch packs, the pistons, the o-rings, how to assemble everything and that, act, uh, that final calibration will be done in a separate movie. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take the tailpiece, remove the o-ring from the tailpiece, it makes our work easier and we're going to fit the tailpiece with only two bolts just for ease of installation. So since I have the, the housing upside down, I also need to fit the tailpiece upside down. And I want to secure it with only two bolts. And I'm going to tell you the reason, I'm going to show you the reason in just a minute. With the tailpiece in place, I can fit the final gear. And that final gear has a spline shaft which goes right into the tailpiece and it has a spacer. And that spacer is your end plate. We're going to do that end plate in the final mo movie as I said. Do not forget that there is a needle bearing on top of this drum. And that needle bearing preferably needs to be soaked in ATF fluid or something else to make sure it's pre-lubed. Because in the first few seconds when you run your transmission, you do not yet have full lubrication. As your pump needs some time filling that completely empty transmission with oil. So, with one hand I slot in the entire assembly. I feel until I make sure the spline grabs. I did, and when that spline grabs, you just slot it in like that. There is no way of fixing it. Uh, the DG drum in the middle will actually hold everything in place. Second step is going to be the actual rebuild of our first drum. This is that uh, notorious F drum. It has the bushing problems on the early years. This is an updated model uh, where they have uh, a different type of bushing in. They have a snap ring here you can take out, take out the bushing. What we're going to do is remove the clutch pack, going to use, uh, going to use my press to remove the cup spring, then we're going to use compressed air to pop the piston out, we're going to check everything out, pop a new piston in uh, and rebuild the entire pack. So the first thing we do, with a flat screwdriver we replace, oh sorry, we remove the snap ring, we're going to flip it over and remove the entire pack, and this is the old pack that I put in about, let's say, six, seven years ago or something. We can now take a look at the pack. Clutches still look okay. You can still see original markings on the clutch pack. So the, the, the wear on this uh, clutch pack is not even that much. The steels look okay. You can see some light heat marks here. You could opt to replace steels when you see small marks. But since I only see like very few marks, I would just reuse them. I don't mind. And as you see, the final plate is this very thin uh, steel plate and this plate doesn't actually help with uh, the grabbing of the clutch or the holding of the clutch this plate This wavy plate makes sure that the clutch applies gradually So now that we have deduced that our frictions are okay now that we don't see any real marks on our steels I'm just gonna replace those frictions in a minute But first we need to get that cup spring out because to get the piston out the cup spring needs to come out and the cup spring is being held in place by the, by the, these two rings so, to remove the cup spring that you see here, we're going to compress the spring. We use little pliers to take out the rings, then we're going to decompress, then we can take out the cup spring. I'm going to need to press a bit more in the middle. That's ring number one. That's number two, popping right out. Now I'm going to release pressure. I'm going to remove my eight pieces. And right now, my cup spring comes right out. 
This is the old model rub molded rubber piston. It's in good shape. It's not leaking. Um, these molded rubber pistons tend to develop leaks around the vulcanized rubber on the in and on the outside. It is recommended to replace them, but if you cannot source the parts because your transmission is old and your suppliers don't stock these parts anymore, under, under the condition that the um, vulcanized rubber parts look good, you can just reuse them. On the 5 HP24, however, one of those pistons is notorious for leaking, so with that transmission I would recommend always replacing the molded rubber piston. To get this piston out, which is being held by suction of the rubber, we need to put compressed air on the feed holes where normally the oil that feeds the piston is being pumped through. So I'm going to take my air pistol. Alright, I got some movement on that piston. With a flat screwdriver I now should be able to pry it out gently. There we go. Here's the molded rubber piston. Still looks good. I have a new one, so I'm going to slot in the new one. But it still looks good. There's, uh, there is no brittleness, there is no cracks, nothing. The rubber is still intact. Same for the inside, so uh, this piston could actually be reused. The drum itself is not very special. Uh, you want to look at a clear and clean drum surface here and an area here that means the ADF has always been uh, doing its uh, job cleaning your drum. Um, it does happen that on these teeth as you see you see little wear which is the friction plates of the next clutch. They tend to wear in the soft aluminum right here. They, they should have made this of steel that would have been much better than uh, soft metal like this. Uh, and if you have no visible damage in your sleeve bearing and your bushing here you can just salvage and reuse the drum. So, we need a new piston. I have the new piston pre-looped right here. I dip my finger in ATF. I'm going to lube that vulcanized rubber a bit more. And now we just want to pop it in. So, I'm dropping it in. And the only thing you need to do to actually mount the piston is use your thumbs and put it in place. With the new piston in place, we have to mount our cup spring again. So we're going back to the press. We're going to put that cup spring on the piston. The cup spring can only go in one way. You will see it fits in that outer, uh, outer area. I'm going to put my piece on it again. And mounting this cup spring is exactly the way you remove it, but reverse, you put some pressure on the spring. So the teeth of the spring are going down. You then take the plastic caps. And then we take the other plastic cap. They're not in position yet, but you need to put them in first. Else when you have one in position, you will not be able to put the other one in position. So that one's in, almost in position. Now we're going to use the pincer and put this first clip in position. First clip is in position. Now we use the pincer and we put the second clip in position. I've got both clips in. Both clips are all the way in. And now I'm going to remove pressure. Now let's check if I did the job right. I did. You see the cup spring is in place. You see both clips are fully in the groove, seated against each other with no, uh, no loose area. So now we are ready to rebuild the clutch pack. And to rebuild the clutch pack, we simply take the old clutch pack and we start with that wavy plate. And then next up is a steel plate. And now we need a new friction. And I have those frictions here ready, pre-lubed in a box of ATF. I'm going to put the old friction aside. You will note, and this is also the way it's supposed to be, that your final steel plate, which is about to come up, 
is actually thicker than the other steel plates. And that's how it's supposed to be. Because this final thick steel plate protects the clutch pack against bulging. When the, the piston applies action on the clutch pack, the entire clutch pack moves against the snap ring. But if this steel plate was too thin, the clutch pack would actually bulge out of the drum. And so the final steel plate can be a lot thicker. This is normal. So, now we just have to install the snap ring again. Which we can do by hand, but you can also let a little flat hand screwdriver, flat head screwdriver assist you. Snap ring is in place, and we have rebuilt our F drum. Before we can mount the F drum, we need to measure for end play and clearance. Reason why it's important to measure for end play and clearance is the transmission computer expects, <coughs> sorry, expects that there is a certain uh, play at the end here next to the snap ring. If there is too much play, the transmission computer needs to adapt because it needs to apply the clutch earlier, else the clutch comes in too late. If there is too little play, the clutch will actually grab too fast, but there is also another risk. With too little play in this area, the clutch can actually start to drag. It's, it's, it's actually supposed to be disengaged, it's not supposed to uh, transmit torque, but since there is so little play, some of the plates actually drag and do transmit a little bit of torque. It means the clutches are going to burn, because it's not supposed to be on in a certain gear. I'm going to take a piece of paper that I have right here with all the clutch information on drum F with five discs, and I've got five friction discs. I need to be between 1.65 millimeter and 1.95 millimeter. So I'm going to take a set of feeler gauges that I have right here. And since I can have 165, let's start at 175. Let's see if we can get 175 between my snap ring and my clutch pack. So first I have to put 175 together. I've got 75 here and I've got 90 here. Uh, let's go the other route. Let's combine... 50, 55 and 60, so that's 1.65 exactly. I should be able to fit this combination of feeler gauge between the snap ring and the top steel plate. And what you do is very simple. You push down the steel plate, you try to pull up the snap ring as much as you can and then you stick your feeler gauges in. So let's see if I can get these in. I can get these in with relative ease, so I am well over the 165. Now let's see if I can get that 195 out of my feeler gauges. Because I need to be under the 195, else I've got too much. So, I've got 50 and uh, need 45. 50 and 55, sorry, and then I need to add 90. I've got 90 right here. So, combining... 90, 50 and 55 and this is giving me 195. I should not be able to fit this stack of feeler gauges. And you may not be able to see it on camera because I need to put this plate down. I cannot put the 195 in between. So I am under 195. I'm going to measure the other side as well just to be sure. I am under 195. And I am over 165, so I don't know exactly where I am with clearance, but I do know that I am within the ZF limit. So I'm done with this drum. I'm going to put the drum in the transmission. The needle bearing that sits, uh, uh, that sits on the drum is already in the transmission. It, it sits right here and it's already on my uh, final piece. So I'm just going to lubricate that surface a little bit. I'm also going to lubricate that bronze bushing a little bit. And now, just with hands, I'm going to slot it in. And before I slot it in, I'm going to align the teeth of the friction discs. The reason for this is, the friction disc is going to grab on that steel cover, on that final part. And if the friction discs are not aligned, at some point it doesn't want to grab anymore, because the teeth are not lined up. So, by hand, nothing special. I move the F-drum in. I now gently twist the F-drum. And I see it going in further and further and further, because as I'm twisting it, the teeth will get aligned. I should be a little bit... yeah, that's it. You hear a click, and you see 
uh, in front of your park wheel lock you see two, uh, two other gears and one of them will actually grab into your F-drum, the other one is for your sensor. That's how you know you're in, uh, you're in correctly. Okay, second part, DG drum, notorious DG drum. I'm calling it notorious because it tends to break on the 5 HP 19. On the 5 HP 18 it doesn't really break uh, uh, a lot because the valve body is solid. Trouble with the DG uh, drum is that you have an intermediate shaft right here being held in place by a snap ring and that snap ring also holds the double sided cup spring in place. So the first thing we need to do is remove the two clutch packs so we have some area to work. We're going to compress the two sided cup spring, we're going to remove the snap ring and as the snap ring is out I can take that intermediate plate out, I can take the cup spring out and the shaft will just drop out or may maybe it needs to tap with a hammer because of the suction of the o-rings. So, first let me open my vise a bit more so I can safely put it on my vise. You gentlemen can actually see something. First thing we're going to do is remove the snap ring. Snap ring is out. Now we're going to remove that entire pack. Pack is out. Let's have a look at our clutch pack. Clutches look good. I see friction material and I see original markings. Steels look good too. No real, no heat marks actually. There's a little bit of dirt on the top steel plate but that's the, that's the varnishing and the, the wear and tear of the gearbox. So that's no issue. And as with the F drum, the friction pack of the DG drum, one side of the DG drum is actually in good shape. So, same for the other side, put this, trans put this drum on the other end, find the snap ring, we remove the snap ring, there's the snap ring, remove the pack, pack is coming out nicely, let's have a look, same here, some grime from, uh, from the general wear and tear on the transmission. Uh, frictions that look good, original numbers and markings on the frictions that haven't wore off even, no heat marks on the steels. Uh, this is another, this is another barely worn clutch pack, no issue here. All right, other side. And now let's actually disassemble that dreaded DG drum. I use a big old bearing to support the DG drum because the moment I take that snap ring out the intermediate shaft can actually drop out and I don't want it to drop out while I'm working with it. Now I've got the race right here which I'm going to use. I'm going to put the opening of the snap ring. Let me explain it one more time. With this race I'm going to compress the uh, two-sided cup spring. This will release the tension of the uh, snap ring that you see here, meaning I can put my snap ring pliers right here, take out the snap ring, take out the plate, take out the uh, cup spring. So that's how we're going to do this. Let me just peek with our glasses. Yes, my snap ring will be coming out. This is going to take me a few tries because every time you have your snap ring in your pliers it's going to pop out again. So I'll be back in a minute when I've actually succeeded in taking the snap ring out. And that's the snap ring. All right. Here's our snap ring. Here's that intermediate backing plate. And here's our two-sided cup spring. And these guys are actually notorious because they tend to uh, they tend to snap somewhere, either they, they crack here or they crack over there. I've actually seen a lot of 5 HP 18s that I disassembled for parts with cracked double sided um, uh, sna uh, cup springs. So, I'm not going to lift the DG drum off just yet. I'm going to make some room. I'm going to put those old clutch packs aside. It may happen that the moment that I lift it up, the shaft will drop out. So, I'm going to put one hand on the shaft 
and support the drum with my other hand. And now this is the narrow side of the drum. This is the, uh, the, the thicker side of the drum. To remove the shaft, it should be enough to use the palm of your hand, else just use a rubber hammer. And as I tap it, it should pop out. Let's see. That's it. And now with that shaft out, you can see on the bottom, everything starts to move. So you push it out. We now have an empty drum. And look, we now have the cup spring of the other side with an intermediate plate used on that other side. And we're going to put this, we're going to put this on the press bed just to make sure we don't mess up. And now we've got this big drum right here in which we have a bearing, a sprag bearing. That sprag bearing can only turn in one direction. And here we have our intermediate shaft. There's nothing special about this intermediate shaft. It has a bronze bushing right here, which you should expect, uh, inspect. It has a bronze, bronze bushing right here, which you should inspect. Other than that, it just has four seals. It has two O-rings and it has two piston ring type seals. I'm going to replace the O-rings right away. I am not going to replace the piston rings yet. Reason for this is when I have the shaft back in the drum and I'm going to put the snap ring back right here in the snap ring groove, I risk risk with all the prying that I damage my new piston seals. So I'm going to put these piston seals in after I've assembled the drum and after the snap ring is in place. Using a flathead screwdriver, we see if we can find an opening somewhere on these piston ring type seals. Else we just start prying them out. I see an opening right here. That's one coming out. Same should be on this one. We just feel with the screwdriver until we feel we have some kind of point of entry. Should be right here. There we go. Alright, piston seals are out. Second is the O-rings. O-ring number one, they're identical, so no issue there. O-ring number two. O-rings are out. So the intermediate shaft is actually ready to be to receive its new rings and be assembled. Now there is not much to see on those plain bearings. If they're worn, you will see definite uh, scratching and fading on your plain bearing. But these still look okay. And although I do recommend replacing all the plain bearings if you're doing a really full nice rebuild, I can't actually order new ones for this, uh, for this gearbox from most vendors, which is probably because the plain bearings generally don't wear in this transmission, aside from that F-drum. I've lubricated them. Here I have the new, seal, new seals from the ZF kit. We're gonna just finish up that intermediate shaft for now so we can put it aside. That's two O-rings. I've already pre-lubed them, but let's just give them some more lube. You need to be careful when you assemble uh, the intermediate shaft because of these teeth not damaging your O-ring. That's why excessive lubing is always recommended. Sits in the second groove. Now we're going to check if we accidentally made a corkscrew, but we didn't. Alright, so that intermediate shot is ready for now. I'm just going to put it aside. Back to the DG drum itself. Now on one side, you see a... Um, uh, you see a steel piston that has rings. We're going to push it out and uh, we're just going to replace the O-rings. On the other side, you see the molded rubber piston. So, as we did before, we need to add compressed air to pop out this piston. I'm going to take my air pistol. I'm going to find out which hole I need to use. Oh, wait. It's, uh, I'm going to need to use this feed hole to pop out that piston. So, let's see if it wants to come out. That's it. That's the molded rubber piston right there. And you can see a perfectly clean uh, uh, chamber right here. You see the feed, uh, the feed hole of the oil. You see that everything is nice and clean. There is no ring here. So all you need to do is pop in the new piston, which we're going to do 
just in a second. First, I want to get that steel piston out. That's it. And here we have an empty DG drum, nothing special. And here we've got a steel piston. They, these generally don't wear at all, but the seals can actually start to leak if your transmission ages or if you have dirt in your transmission. So the only thing we have to do to reuse this piston is remove the oil seals right here. That gets soaked. We've got a ring for the outside. And then we've got a ring for the inside. And with these two rings excessively lubricated let's just use my finger to get that grime off the piston for added good measure the only thing we need to do is just pop the piston back so let's see if I can do it on camera you see me putting the piston right here in the drum and now I just need to use my thumbs and I pop the piston back in place the other side is the molded rubber piston let's get my new molded rubber piston out this new molded rubber piston looks exactly the same. The old one doesn't have anywhere. You do see some marks of the cup spring. So apparently this cup spring tends to be kind of aggressive on the surface of the piston, but it was still functional. So I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Here we have the new one. Let me just lubricate it. New one is lubricated. And as we did before with the molded rubber piston of drum F, we toss in the piston, we use our thumbs, and we push it in. All right, so the drum itself is now actually ready. Before we rebuild the drum, let's take a look at this bearing. I don't see anything bad on the bearing. I don't see any damage on the race that holds the, uh, the, the, the little balls. I don't see anything bad on that, uh, uh, that brass or bronze looking ring. Uh, I never really know how to judge if you can or cannot reuse the bearings. I feel it will turn in one way. I feel it will block in the other way. So the Sprague functionality is actually there. So I guess you just lubricate these bearings and you just reuse them. So, with some oil on the bearing, the bearing is ready to be reused. And now let's start reconstructing this, this drum. First we go to the steel side. We put our snap ring in position, uh, sorry, we put our cup spring in position, then we're going to put that intermediate holding plate in position. And you can see that there is actually th three of these notches that hold it into place. I guess it doesn't really matter how you put it back together. I haven't really, I haven't read anything about it and it's going to be clamped in anyway. This is all loose, it, it can just pop out. Now we're going to put this this uh, uh, geared part with the bearing in. I'm going to put the drum down. And you can't go wrong with this because, take a look at this, you cannot mount this upside down. It just looks bad. You'll know that you have to mount it this way and the brass here runs on the surface of that, um, that intermediate plate. So we put Hang on, let me just clean the surface of that intermediate plate as it acts as a bearing surface. I need to be a bit more thorough with this, apologies. Now we're going to put our bearing on it right away. Now I need my intermediate shaft here. This is where I put my intermediate shaft. And this is the side that sits in the bearing. So. You can see it has teeth, which will fall into the teeth of the drum. And holding the drum in my hands, I need to play a little bit with that intermediate shaft until it pops in. And since it's going to get some suction of those O-rings, it may actually take you a minute, those new fresh O-rings, to get it right. 
Hang on, I lost a little bit of my glove right there. I want that out. Right, so let's put it back together. And when you feel that your intermediate shaft grabs in the teeth, you just want to push it down. Hang on, let me get rid of these gloves because they're falling apart and that's a risk. And I'll just have to use my bare hands for this one and then sw swap to other gloves in the second part of the movie. Apologies, that wasn't the right thing to do. That's it, there we go. You can feel it popping in step by step. It's those O-rings that need... I'm going to use two old bearing races right here so I can put the drum down for a second. Let me see if you guys catch this on camera. Yes, you do. And this allows me to put free power on that intermediate shaft. There you go. And now you need to slot it in the bearing. So you hold that you hold that one-way bearing perfectly in the middle. My drum is free. I may actually need a rubber hammer for this. I may actually need a rubber, ha rubber hammer for this. So let me get my hammer out. Never mind, no rubber hammer inside. See if I've got a piece that can assist me. I do. This old bearing race fits nicely, so now I can use a normal hammer. And holding that sprag bearing in the middle. a few millimeter of progress that's it that's it but now we have the risk if I release the drum it's gonna drop out again so I'm going to set up my press again with this big old bearing I'm gonna put it down on that big old bearing and this will actually prevent the shaft from dropping out And if you did, let me just show you guys, if you put the intermediate shaft in correctly, you will see that the teeth right here grab in uh, nicely and you will see that your snap ring grooves becomes visible. If you do not see the snap ring grooves and two piston ring grooves, you did it wrong. On the other side, you will see that your um, intermediate shaft, shaft is flush with the brown area of your bearing. So, back on the press. The first thing we do is putting the two two-sided cup spring back as I said before I'm not fitting those pistons rings yet then we're gonna put that intermediate plate in then I'm going to put my assisting piece on it with another one all right and then I have an old socket then I'm gonna take out my glasses we're going to Put some pressure on that piece. I've got the snap ring right here. Here we go. All right, we got it. Taking my snap ring pliers, and this is going to take a while. Like with the dismantling, it can take you between 5 and 10 minutes depending on how nimble you are with your fingers. Sorry, I got to cheat with those glasses again. 
the downside of all that greasy automatic transmission fluid. There we go. Got the snap ring in place, releasing pressure. Removing my existing pieces. And here you see a rebuilt DG drum, aside from the clutch pack. We've got the bearing that turns only in one way. We've got those uh, pistons new, and we've got the snap ring back together. And now you see why I didn't put those O-rings in yet, because of all the fiddling here with the snap ring under the press means I could damage these rings easily. All right, final part is actually those new rings. Note that they are different. So there is a smaller and a bigger one. The drum will show you which one you put in what location. Let's see, the bigger one goes below. So let's fit that piston ring. Let's try not to decompress it too much. Because it that's one piston ring in. Now let's put that second piston ring in. Piston rings are back in place too. And now we're going to do the rebuild on the clutch pack itself. And that's a pretty straightforward part, as you've seen before. Let's see if I have the right one here. This is the right one. Snap ring is in. All right. Now let me just clean my hands a little bit. I'm gonna have to take a break and uh, find some gloves for the next part. I go back to the end measure, uh, the uh, the end clearance. So we've got the G with the four friction plates, which means that I need to be between 1.3 and 1.6 millimeters according to ZF themselves. 1.3 and 1.6 so let's start with the 1.6 I've got one right here and let's see if I can get 0 0.6 I can I have a feeler gauge on that 6 and it's exactly the same way as before we're gonna see if we can get that 1.6 in between and we should not be able to get 1.6 in between and I can already see I cannot put 1.6 using my fingers raising my snap ring pressing down on my steel plate I cannot get 1.6 in now let's go to 1.3 we're talking 0, 0 0.3 millimeters here this is like almost nothing so now we've got 1.3 and I should be I should be able just maybe let me see I should be able to get 1.3 in yes I can actually get 1.3 in just barely but it fits the well, multiple sides of the friction oh sorry the steel plate and the snap ring I want to see, yep, it goes in here too. So, let's rebuild the other side of the clutch pack. Snap ring is in. And this is the one with six frictions, and it has to be between 2.09 and 2.74. There is another way we can measure this. We measure the total distance to the upper teeth, and then we measure the thickness of the snap ring. That's how we're going to do this. Zero. Yes, it is. And I'm going to approximately decide when I am at the top of the snap ring groove, which is right about now. 
that says 5.32 take the snap ring snap ring is 2.9 so 5.32 minus 2.9 3.32 minus uh, 9 that's 2.6 something and that is within the 2.74 limit so I dare to say I dare to say my end play is correct. Alright, got some new gloves. Uh, before we're going to put that DG drum in, we can actually test the clutch actuation with air. And what we want to see when we apply air, we want to see some clutch back action. And the moment we release air, we want to see uh, the clutch drop back. Because the cup spring takes care of the clutch uh, falling back in a loose position. So let's add some compressed air. That's the clutch action right there. Let's do that the other side. Good clutch action. And this is how you test if your clutch and piston is uh, properly functioning. So now we're going to toss in this, uh, this DG drum. The DG drum is actually held in place by three big Torx bolts as a center support. I'm going to lubricate the, uh, the rubber seals a little bit that I need to slot in. You cannot go wrong with the installation of the DG drum as you need to put three Torx bolts in these three threaded holes which you do not have on the other side. So there is no way you can install the DG drum in the wrong way. So let's get going. First I'm going to align the clutch discs that will grab in my clutch. And then I'm going to go ahead and attempt to fit the drum. I've got the drum in position, now I need to slide it into the other, in the F drum. And this may actually require you to use four hands, so you will need a buddy to help you. Or you need to put the transmission on its back, so gravity assists you. This can be a really nasty job to do on your own. Alright, it definitely took me longer than I thought, but with the wiggling, pulling, pushing, wiggling, I got it in. So I'm going to take one of those three big Torx bolts. The next piece for overhauling, let's take a look. I've got my DG in place, is my planetary gear set that I'm going to fit. So let's take that planetary gear set and let's have a look. This is a pretty straightforward part. You've got this, this ring, this carrier type of part. Then you've got the actual planetary gear set right here with a needle bearing on top. And you've also got a needle bearing right here on the inside. To actually get this needle bearing out, you need to dismantle the entire gear set. Uh, since this is just a backyard rebuild, what I'm going to do is check if the needle bearing is okay. If I don't see any loose needles, and you can see it by moving it around, you can actually count, see and count the needles. After which I'm going to drop in oil, so the bearing is pre-oiled. going to put some oil on the other bearing, and I'm just going to slot it in. So dipping my finger in oil on that inside needle bearing. Assembly grease will do a very good job here as well. Okay, so that one's done. Gonna flip it over, gonna take off that needle bearing, gonna give it a good dip in the oil. So it's properly fully oiled. And now we're gonna install this set. And as you can see, there is only one way this entire puzzle can be put in. There is no way you can mess this up. You're going to need to put the shaft right there into that intermediate shaft. And this cover needs to arc over the teeth that you see right here. So let's have a go at it. Apologies, I just dropped part of the needle bearing.
All right, my spine is grabbing into my DG drum. And that's it. I've got my planetary gear set in. That carrier ring is snug fit. I've got the teeth around here in that carrier ring. And now let's see if I use the end. You can see the action. If I'm turning it the other way around, you can see the action on the planetary gear set, just like that. Now we've got the wheel of the planetary gear set. Inside that wheel is a bushing. So you need to inspect that bushing for uh, uh, fading marks. Fading as in uh, metal being uh, dull. Uh, but if it's okay, you can just lubricate it. And you can slot it right in. And there is only one way you can fit it because it needs to arc over that bearing ring. I'm intentionally dropping it in the wrong way. Won't work. Now I'm putting it in the right way with the collar to the top. Uh, there is gearboxes where these gears are actually uh, meshed together some way that you need to put that gear in exactly a certain position. As far as I know, the 5HP18 does not have a, uh, a gear like that. You can just slot it in any way you want to as long as it properly grabs into the planet gears. There we go. Now it's not aligned with the bearing, so you put in your finger, you align that bearing. Now it's aligned with the bearing. That's another part done. Center support, DG drum is stuck, planetary gear set is in. So let's see what we have now. After the planetary gear set, I've got the E-clutch. All right, got it, E-clutch coming up. This is actually the, the final pack that you're doing, because after this we're already moving to the pump. You can see the entire assembly right here. This is the input shaft and there's another intermediate shaft. So let's take it apart gently. And we're gonna have to do some O-ring work again. All right, so this drum is going over that, uh, over the uh, the gear of the planetary gear set. So we're just going to slot that right in, and you will see if you put the collar of the planetary gear set in the right position, this drum fits perfectly. There we go, fits perfectly. Let's see what we have next. We've got this entire assembly here with needle bearings. There's a needle bearing right here. There is a needle bearing here in the middle and then there's a needle bearing on the top. And I've actually got the ring of that needle bearing right here, so let me just take that needle bearing out. I'm going to lubricate those three needle bearings and I'm going to drop these metal parts right in. And let's slot it in. As you can see, there is a lot of needle bearings all over the place, so it is very important that you put this transmission aside with every needle bearing in the correct position, so you're absolutely sure when you're assembling the transmission that you're assembling it the correct way. This one sits firmly against that outer drum. This one needs to be pushed in, and now also sits firmly against the drum. And now you can see, you can see some more planet action. Watch what happens when I twist the inner uh, the inner gear or the inner surface that you see here. You see that there is reduction, the RPMs don't match, and you see that these outer parts are twisting in the other direction. So we know for sure that our planetary gear set is working properly. All right, next part, we've got that input shaft with uh, two clutches. These two clutches need to be rebuilt like we did with the F-drum, but first you need to get that big drum from the input shaft. The trick to this is very simple, with your fingers or with the palm of your hand, you get it out just like that. All right, so let's have a look. Drum looks okay. You see very minor wear right here on the surface, just like we did with the F-drum. But it's not as bad as the F-drum, so light alloy actually works in this clutch pack. Uh, we're going to proceed by taking off the snap ring, removing the pack, removing the piston, and rebuilding as we did before. So with the screwdriver, I remove the snap ring. Snap ring is out. Let's have a look at the clutch pack. End plate looks fine. Friction looks good. See the original marking right here, as if it has nowhere at all. You see some burn marks here. Interesting. Very interesting. 
I had I have no idea why because the transmission was okay but you do see some scorching right here you see another good friction you see another steel another good friction another steel looks pretty good and you see that wave plate on the end all right so we've got one steel that has slight burn marks if I had a spare transmission here with spare steels and I had plenty of steels but I threw them all away as I thought I never would rebuild this box anyway I would actually replace that one steel part with another one but I don't think it's going to be a problem because I've been dri driving this transmission for about 200,000 kilometers 200,000 kilometers on the previous rebuild and the clutches are coming out super fresh and the, the shift action was excellent so I'm not really worried about this transmission now very interesting you do not see a cup spring on this uh, on this uh, piston. Normally, remember, we have a cup spring here and we need to put some pressure on it and then we take the cup spring out and then when uh, the cup spring is out, the piston comes out by blowing with air. Here you see a clip, clip holding this piston in place. But we cannot get that clip out unless we put some action on the piston. So we're going to have to put pressure on the piston downwards, then we get the clip out, then we get the piston out. Let's set it up. There we go. You hit the you hit the noise. I've got the ring out. And here we have the piston without the ring, so I can get the piston out right now, for which I will need air pressure again. There we go. You heard it pop. We've got an empty drum right here, not much to do. If you've got a piston right here that has an inner o-ring right here and in the second part of the piston the outer o-ring and the cup spring. As you can see there's not much to do here. We just leave the cup spring in place. We're going to replace these two seals and we're going to put it back in position. That's one o-ring done. And that's another o-ring done. So let's take that green o-ring that we just lubricated. And we slot in the green o-ring the groove looks nice and clean so no debris that's ready now let's have that dark o-ring the groove looks nice and clean so let's slot that one in too now let's check if we put in a twist accidentally no we didn't did we twist no we didn't we push the inside of the piston over the cup spring in the outside, in the outer part of the piston, just like this. My bad. So let's get that inner o-ring out, which I just did. Let's get the new o-ring. It didn't look bad anyway, but I want everything new. Let's put in that new o-ring. Let's see if we accidentally put a corkscrew but we didn't all right so that I'll show it to you I did it on the table before but let's have a look that's it piston is in um, right snap ring back in there we go moving pressure Now I want to check if it's nice and nice and smooth. All right, time to rebuild that clutch pack. Same as before. Wave plate comes in first. Snap ring is back in place. The next part, my end plate. This was clutch A. And it needs to be between 165 and 195. So I should not be able to fit 195. Let's see. I'm going to put 90 and 95 together. That's 185. I can do a little bit more actually, but let's see. Let's see. Let me just add 10 and we go for 195 right away. Here's the 10. So we've got 195 to be exact. And we don't want this 195 to fit. 
No, you can see that I can just barely get 185 in, but I cannot get the final part. I really need to do my best to get the final part in. Check the other way. Same here, by holding holding the snap ring up top and pushing the steel down with my thumb, I cannot slot my 195 in. So that's pretty okay. And the lower limit was 165. I should still be able to get 165 in. But since I see I think I'll just I'll manage. I'm going to put 8 and 85. This is 165. I should be able to put 165 in. And on this side I can 165 fits. And on this side also. So that's okay. And play is correct. This one's ready. Um, we want to assemble this in one piece, so I'm just going to put it aside. And we're going to continue with the second part, which is actually the input shaft right here uh, with a steel uh, drum on it. And in the drum you have the clutch pack. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this clutch pack out. Snap ring is out. I've got some discs that are kind of stuck. Hang on. All right, they're popping out. There we go. Let's have a look at the clutch pack. Thick end plate, clutch plate, look at the marking. Original marking, still fully intact. Surface feels nice, nice and thick as you can see. Second steel plate, no marks, okay. Another clutch plate in good condition, steel in good condition, clutch in good condition. This pack looks really nice. This pack is, I guess this pack is uh, fully okay. Right, so now, We've got two piston rings, three piston rings right here. We've got an O-ring right here. And we've got ourselves a, um, a piston right here. So we're going to dismantle this pack. As you can see, it fits nicely in my press. Now I can safely release it. The sound you heard, the click, was everything getting in position. There we go. Here you see the piston with the O-rings that we replaced. Right here you see the two cup springs that you need to use together. And right here you see the clips. And what I did with that brace is compressing the snap ring so that the groove in which my clips sit becomes visible. And then with pincers on the one hand and a non-magnetic screwdriver on the other hand, you need to try to move the clips right inside the groove. That's how you do it. Okay, so let's assemble this drum again. Um, mind you that I still have those piston rings to replace, but I'm going to do that after I've assembled the drum. And I also have that ring right here to replace. So let's remove that O-ring right here. Let's compare it to the new ring. Funny to say that my new ring is actually green compared to my old ring. Lubricate that new ring. We carefully install the new ring since I have teethed surfaces here, that's a risk. Alright, ring has been installed. Now I need that big drum again. And if you guys remember, you just slot in and you just tap it in with your hands because I also tapped it out. Before I do this, I will put some ATF oil on the 
surface where they actually connect on the mating surface of the teeth. And all we got to do now is we put that drum in the outer drum and we need to make sure and now we want to make a firm push until we hear it snap in and I may just have to put it on the table just a minute I'm putting it on the table and I'm gonna push down let me see if I can actually make you guys see this let me make some room here so I'm putting it down on the table and I pushed it in if you heard that click that was the drum going over the o-ring being stuck on the o-ring so this is what we're looking at and we still have that clutch pack here with those very uh, thick uh, frictions I mean the diameters are small but to make sure you have enough surface for the torque they just made these really thick uh, uh, packs and from what I can see this pack does not have a wave plate so I guess it goes in without a wave plate so let's uh, let's reassemble it the inside of the drum there we go almost there that's the snapping right there alright so uh, let me just take a look what I need We are dealing with clutch E right here, and this is a five plate thick clutch, and it needs to be between one and a half and two and a half. Ideally, I don't want to be able to fit this. And I am not. With the snap ring all the way up and the plate all the way down, I am not able to fit two and a half, and that's good. And I want this to be in, I want this to go in with relative ease. So I'm absolutely sure that I'm between the one and a half and the two and a half. Yes, and I can get this in with relative ease on all sides. So this clutch is within spec. All right, final part of this entire assembly is the piston rings. These are the piston rings that I put in a few years ago, five, six years ago, something. They're still in good shape, but we're going to replace them since we have the kit anyway. So with my fingers, I can just take those piston rings out. And I've got three new piston rings at the ready. Two of them are identical. One of them is bigger or, or uh, uh, bigger. It goes uh, on the bottom. So let me just pre-lube it with ATF. And then I'm going to carefully slide it over the entire shaft here this is the, our input shaft remember I've got the third one in now I don't want the openings to face each other so I'm gonna turn them in such a way that the openings of the piston rings are never really uh, under or over another opening and there we go and it doesn't really matter it's gonna seal anyway but it's just for the feeling of perfection now we're gonna slot this assembly in exactly the way you see right here and as before, you are grabbing with multiple gear surfaces and clutches, so you twist, turn, push, pull, twist, twist, turn, push, pull, until it's all the way in. And I've got it in, no issue here. All right, we are nearing the end. I've still got the big drum that is being held by the brake band with a needle bearing right here. Uh, and after I actually put in this drum, we're already uh, going to put in the uh, uh, the pump with the C1 clutch uh, and the uh, the sprag bearing. So first, as before, we're just going to go work on this clutch. Let me just get that bearing out, just to make sure I'm not going to misplace the bearing. There's the snap ring. Now let's remove the pack. Hang on. Got some pieces who want to stay behind. Here's the pack, thick end plate, frictions that look good, original markings again, no issue here. No real bad markings, nothing visible on the steels. I'm just going to reuse the steels like I did with all the other packs. And as before, we need to use the hydraulic press. We need to put a ring on this spring. 
and we need to lose the tension of the cup spring to take those plates out. So I've got that set up. And there's a cup spring right there. And now we have our piston uh, where we want it to remove it. So I'm going to put my compressor on it. I'm going to remove the piston. There we go. There's our piston. And in this drum you see there is a, uh, a big bushing right here, which you need to check. Uh, nothing special on the other side. I'm going to put a new outer o-ring on my piston. I already forgot if I told you before, but you kind of never need to replace those metal pistons unless you see uh, you see grave damage. They they tend to be okay. They don't uh, they don't really go bad. And before we continue, there's a little secret that I just come to mind. Look at the inside of the piston, pops out just like that. That's the other two. That's the other O-ring we got to replace. I almost forgot about it. So here's the second O-ring on the inside. To be together just so you don't mess up or mix up apologies I've got the inside of the piston back in place with the o-ring sealing you just push it in with your fingers no biggie but we've got one o-ring left that we actually have to put inside the drum itself so let's take that old o-ring out so Hang on, before I put it in, it's got these little check balls. And let me just reason if these check balls would have to be in a certain position, but I guess not. I don't see any markings or whatever that the check balls should be in a certain position. So let's just toss it in. As with all the other pistons, we just firmly push. And our piston seats. Now we're going to assemble the cup spring again. And I've got my piston and my uh, and my cup spring back in with these with these clips seated. And it looks like the clips are jumping out. As you can see, there is a little bit of distance right here. So you think the clips are jumping out, but trust me, these clips are all the way in. It's just the way it is. Final part of this drum: assembling the clutch again. There we go. That's my snap ring. Now I want to see if I have movement. Yes, the clutch can move. As I said before, I do not have to measure end play. I have no uh, data on this. The ZF manual doesn't say anything. Um, I kind of forgot if I have to put the drum first and then the brake band or first the brake band then the drum. So let's put that brake band in first. I want to lubricate the, the clutch surface of, of the brake band before I put it in. And as I said before in the previous movie, this is the thicker version. There is also a thinner version, which is used on the 520 and some 525s. But if you've got a diesel, or if you've got a V8 or an M3, guarantee that you have the thicker brake band. It probably needs a bit more holding power on those applications. So using my gloves to fully lubricate the clutch surface of ATF, I am ready to install my brake band. You can see the two pins right here. Make sure you have both pins, one pin on the bottom, one pin on the top, else your brake band cannot actuate properly. And the only thing we have to do is just slot the brake band in, making sure that those little ears on the brake band are seated uh, below those pins, one above the pin, one below the pin. Now we don't want to forget about our needle bearing, which I will thoroughly lubricate in ADF. The needle bearing itself looks okay, absolutely no dirt, absolutely no wear, feels really smooth. And with the bearing facing the next drum, with the teeth going inside, I need to put this drum in. 
And the little issue that we have now is that the bearing will actually fall out. So let me just put the bearing on the surface where it's supposed to be seated. That's easier, which is on that next drum. Now I'm going to put the drum in the brake band. Drum sliding in. Twist, turn, twist, turn, twist, turn, twist, turn, twist, turn, twist, turn. There we go. I'm going to move the camera because I want you guys to see something. If you have this drum in your brake band properly seated, you will see the teeth of this drum and that drum grabbing into each other. And you have the brake band right here. And you can see that I've got those bolts in. And as you saw in the beginning of the movie, I've got the tailpiece with two bolts in. This is the right order, not only the right order, but you can now also see that you have the exact correct positioning. If anything is not correctly positioned, either you cannot fix your DD, DG drum or your drums will not properly grab into each other. So this is the way you check if everything has been correctly fit. All right, the final part we need to work on is the pump, the C1 clutch, the Sprague bearing, and we need to fit this pump. When you dismantle the transmission, you will see that there is a big, a large O-ring right here on the edge. And this is actually what seals the outside of the pump. The bolt holes of the pump are sealed by those little metal rubber rings. Um, I took the seal off and I'm not going to put the seal in yet because I need to dismantle the pump again in the next movie to inspect it on the inside. For today I'm just going to show you how to rebuild this, uh, how to rebuild this clutch and the piston just, you, just so you can get along, assuming that your pump is still intact. Now I know for a fact that this pump is still intact, but for the, the complete coverage of the YouTube video I will still dismantle the pump at a later stage and show you what a correct or what a good pump looks like. So, to start rebuilding this clutch we're going to remove the snap ring and this clutch uses a big spring ring, spring ring instead of a cup spring so we don't actually have to um, uh, remove a cup spring. I'm going to lift the entire pack out because of that carrying spring ring. Now note that there is below the spring ring there is still a thick steel plate. This is important so you don't displace that spring ring and then there is the wave plate. So the wave plate and the thick steel go in first. I just took the clutch out of the, out of the drum and immediately I noticed that I have some scorching right here. Uh, and I've uh, got some mild scorching. No, I guess I don't really have any bad scorching on the other side. Probably on my previous rebuild I probably flipped this one over so that the initial gearbox, the, the moment it left the factory, uh, caught some scorching right here on the steel. So let's take a look at the friction. The friction surface is quite okay. I still have friction material. I still see some original markings, but what I see, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but maybe another friction will show more of it. Here you see some more burn marks. I'm kind of surprised. And here you see even more burn marks. And if you can, perhaps you can see it on camera, you see that the inside of the disc is more dark than the outside of the friction disc. So I guess I have reason to believe that those burn marks have been caused by the inside of the frictions for whatever reason. And that's, very, that's interesting to see. Here you see we have even more burn marks, we've got more um, dark spots on the inside and here, is, here as well. And remember what I said, I've been running this transmission for about 200,000 kilometers without an issue. So although we just saw uh, burn marks and markings on the uh, friction on the inside of the friction discs. I've had no issue with this transmission at all. I do want to make sure that I uh, I put the right stuff back. So uh, when I have everything apart and when I'm about to rebuild with um, the new discs that I'm lubricating right here, we'll just take a look at uh, if those steel plates are bent in any way and if they're still straight. Because I guess as long as they're smooth, don't have any pitting or corrosion, and as long as they're straight, I guess you can use them. Most important part here is the sprag bearing. You want the sprag bearing the way it's mounted to turn clockwise and to block counterclockwise. So we're looking from the back of the transmission towards the front of the transmission. The torque converter sits here. We want it to turn clockwise. We want it to block counterclockwise. If you mess this up, if you put this bearing in the other way, I don't know exactly what will happen, but you should lose some kind of gear or you should cause a bind up because it's blocking when it's supposed to run and it's running when it's supposed to block. Final part we have here is a needle bearing. I want to take that needle bearing out because I'm going to work on that piston. 
needle bearing itself looks okay all the needles are intact no strange marks on the races of the needle bearing so we're going to put that needle bearing aside exactly the way we need to put it back together and now we're looking at the piston and as you saw the clutch pack let me just grab that clutch pack again has this big spring ring and this ring sits against the drum which is behind the pump right here and the moment this piston loses power the spring ring actually pushes it back so that's how this clutch is being actuated to remove the piston we need to put air on one of these holes and I'm not sure exactly which one so I'm just gonna test until I found it that's the one you saw it popping and with a flat screwdriver under the piston I can actually pry that piston out and you want you want to make sure that your screwdriver really hits under the piston so that you do not damage the surface of the piston where the o-ring sits and for every groove that I see here I'm actually gently and equally prying out the piston until I can use my fingers to really make it slide and pop out there we go there's an o-ring on the piston right here there's an o-ring on the piston right there you don't have to do anything right here if you're not checking out your pump internally reasons not to check your pump is if you've been driving your car for let's say 200 thousand kilometers you want to rebuild your transmission but your pump is okay you have good pressure you have no noises the general drivability of your car is okay uh, which is a reason to believe that your pump is still okay in that case you can leave the entire pump house the way it is right now so I'm not going to replace these o-rings yet as I still have to take it apart so we're assuming that I've just replaced and lubricated the rings I'm also not going to replace those three piston rings as I still have to take this piece apart so I'm just going to leave this uh, the piston rings in place uh, the so-called rebuilt piston will now be put back in place so I now evenly put pressure hoping that I can push the piston in place with my bare hands and you just heard it click so the piston is in um, now I'm going to rebuild the clutch pack I want to lubricate those steels a little bit you see that there is a, a pattern of teeth you got to follow the pattern you can only put these plates in in a certain way that was the thin piece right here we have a thick steel plate and I'm gonna check if it's still straight and by looking at it I see that it isn't warped let me see if I can put this properly on camera you can see that the steel plate is not warped so I'm willing to I'm willing to use the steel plate again and so we continue if you have a warped steel plate or if the surface is not smooth I recommend against using it and I guess you just have to go for new steels now we need to put in the spring ring so I say again wave plate steel plate spring ring and now you start stacking clutches so I take a new clutch which I lubricated in that box I take another steel and this one doesn't this one is not bent either check it out Then I take another clutch. Another steel with heavy markings, but it's still smooth. And it's not bent at all, it's still straight. For those of you that are watching, if you actually also rebuild a 5HP18, please let me know what you encounter just to see if this is unique or if more of you have this problem with the C1 clutch another regular steel let's have a look if this was not my own transmission if I had this transmission in a car that I bought and I would encounter this type of damage I would not reuse it as I would not know if the transmission has functioned properly so if, if I get this gearbox from uh, from what you Americans would call Craigslist, I would not reuse these uh, steels as I would not be sure. But since I've driven this transmission myself, 
without any complaints I dare to say everything is okay even though we do see the heavy heat damage snap ring is in place and now we got to check for end play uh, C1 that's um, Let's have a look between 1.3 and 1.6. Now let's check the other side. I am able to put 1.3 in. I should not be able to put in more than 1.6. That's 1, that's 6. I cannot put 1.6 in. Same here. I cannot put 1.6 in. So I am between 1.3 and 1.6 meaning that my clutch clearance is okay uh, old steels with markings but new frictions uh, let's see what happens as I said before I will not be replacing anything else as I still need to take it apart the final part we put in the clutch back we put back in the clutch is the needle bearing which I'll give a good soak of ATF And on that needle bearing, we're going to put our one-way roller, clockwise block counterclock. And now the pump is ready to assemble and put into the transmission. All right, I had to put the transmission uh, back on my uh, my other table because I had a uh, small emergency job on an alternator repair. What we're going to do now is put the pump in place and when the pump is in place we're going to secure it with two bolts uh, but uh, loose because uh, as I said before I still need to be able to take things apart and I also still need to correct for end play. So you will make your life a lot easier if you put the sprag bearing in uh, first and then you actually put in the pump. And you can identify the way you can put the sprag bearing in. Not only do we have the, uh, the uh, clockwise counterclockwise trick which is now from the other side roll counterclockwise block clockwise but you also see that the smooth surface right here has to sit over the smooth surface right there meaning that the geared surface grabs into that geared surface the surface so that's how you are sure that you put the sprag in the right way it sits nice and tight right here let's check again turns counter blocks clock so the moment we look from the back it's actually turning clockwise, looking from the back, blocking counterclockwise, like I did before. Now we're going to take our pump to put our pump in. Do not forget the needle bearings and do not forget to properly lubricate these uh, uh, piston rings. And as you see, we need to align this side of the pump up here. There's oil feed and drain uh, channels and you need to align the bolt holes properly else you don't have a threaded hole. I will be uh, putting this pump back uh, uh, with uh, quite ease because I don't have the o-ring installed as I still need to take it apart. If you already have your o-ring for final installation it's going to be a bit more difficult for you but the technique to put the pump in place is the same. What we're going to do is align the pump the way it should go in which is roughly this way with my eye I'm checking that my bolt hole grabs in the threaded hole right there and the moment we have the pump almost in position the only thing we're going to do as we did so many times is twist and turn until the pump actually drops in we are now twisting and turning and making the friction plates of the C1 grab into the sprag bearing that we just put in and the pump sits flush against the outer area so as long as you feel that there's a notch here, your pump is not properly in place. And now all I have to do is take two of the Torx bolts. And I've got thread, so that means I've, to, I've positioned the pump correctly. And I'm also going to put one of those Torx bolts right here in the lower one. And now I'm going to check on the top if the teeth of, those, uh, of the drum over the brake band and the other drum are still grabbing so I'm sure I didn't dislodge anything and I didn't so this is basically how you reassemble your 5 HP 18 transmission guts next movie is going to contain the replacement of the seal 
the pump bushing just so that I have done at least one bushing on this transmission to show you the bearing on the end the seal on the end I've got an oil seal on the side that I want replaced I need to replace those rubber uh, rubber metal sealing rings I'm going to put the valve body back I'm going to check final clearance I'm going to check uh, brake band clearance and with that final movie that I'm going to make you really have your backyard transmission uh, done basically hope you enjoyed the movie uh, I can promise you that the next movie will be up in a week, but I'm not going to make it. Give me a few months and the next movie will be online as well.